This is the second video in a brand new series where we take a look at two or more seemingly contradictory books, where the ideas and insights from one popular book appear to contradict with the insights and ideas from another popular book. Now, in the last episode, we took a look at The Lean Startup by Eric Ries versus Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And in this episode, we're gonna look at The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss and how it compares to Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Now, in my personal opinion, I would suggest these two books seem to contradict even more so than the last two books that we covered. So let's first set the stage by taking a high level look at the basic premise behind each one of these books. When it comes to The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, this book is all about how to make the most of your valuable time. It's about working smarter, not harder. And in many ways, it focuses on prioritizing and optimizing the way that you spend your time and energy. And it's not just about what you do, but it's also about how you do it. So it's all about making sure that at the end of the day, you're not wasting a bunch of time and energy on things that aren't actually creating the results that you want, and instead, you're paring down and simplifying and focusing on the things that are creating the best results in your life. Now, Crush It! by Gary Vaynerchuk instead is all about taking action and making things happen. Gary is very well known for his hustle mentality and in general, promoting a bias towards taking action. So rather than sitting on the sidelines and trying to come up with the perfect plan or over overly focusing on optimization or prioritization or anything that might lead you to procrastinate or fall into perfectionism, Gary is all about making sure that you simply get in the game and start to build momentum and start to learn from real life experience. So rather than just trying to come up with the perfect plan, it's about getting in there, trying things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, and continuing to make progress by actually taking action. Now, when it comes to making sense of this contradiction, it's very important to recognize that the average book out there, especially some of the most popular books, are typically trying to solve a very specific problem. So rather than offering up generic life advice that can kind of appeal to everybody, they're trying to solve a specific need in one situation or in one context. So for example, a book like Crush It is really geared towards people that, for example, are stuck in procrastination or perfectionism or in overly planning everything that they do. And as a result, they aren't really taking action. They're failing to get in the game. They're not building up real life experience. Maybe they're on the sidelines. Maybe they're dreaming about some future possibility, but they're not actually taking action. And the four hour work week on the other end of the spectrum is really for people People that have said yes to way too many things. So they've said yes to many opportunities, they've explored many possibilities, and then they find themselves in an interesting place where they are achieving some success, but a lot of their time and energy is being spent on tasks and projects and opportunities that aren't exactly panning out. So they started out by saying yes to many things, some of those things worked, that ended up reinforcing their belief in saying yes to things, and then they land in this position where they just have way too much going on in their life and they're overworked, they don't have life balance, and they don't have time or energy to take on new and interesting projects. Now, interestingly enough, and I think this is the number one takeaway from this entire episode, is the ideal balance, at least in my opinion, is not to try to find the gap in the middle of these two extremes, but instead to naturally switch between two different modes of operating. So on the one hand, when you're trying to unlock new and interesting opportunities, you wanna take a crush it approach to just saying yes, to having a bias towards action and getting in the game and learning by actually doing various things and getting engaged in interesting opportunities and possibilities. And invariably, you're going to say yes to way too many things and you're going to find yourself in this mode where you need a book like The 4-Hour Workweek to pare down and simplify, to identify the things that are working and the things that aren't working. And depending on just how overworked you've become in this process, you might need some time to recover and to recuperate and to settle into something like a 4-Hour Workweek where you're really laid back, you're not taking on a lot of things, but in my personal experience and in talking with other entrepreneurs, invariably this leads to boredom and an opportunity to take on new things once again. And I think there's a temptation after you read a book like The 4-Hour Workweek or become overly focused on prioritization and optimization to fall into the trap of only accepting new projects or tasks or opportunities that are proven or are highly likely to succeed. But this, of course, can very much limit 
the kinds of things that you take on. And so for that reason, I would highly suggest after having some time to recover, switching back into more of a crush it approach where you're saying yes to many opportunities, you're trying lots of things, you're getting back in the game, you're not being overly selective, you're not just focusing on things that are almost guaranteed winners, you're trying lots of interesting and sometimes off the beaten path opportunities in an effort to find really interesting projects that are worth your time that might unlock incredible potential. So on the one hand, you start with a crush it approach. You say yes to many things. You gain practical life experience. You try many different opportunities. Then you switch to a four-hour workweek philosophy. You simplify, you optimize. In some cases, you automate or offload certain tasks to other people. Maybe you hire some people. And then when you have a lot of time on your hands and you inevitably get bored, you want to switch back to a crush it approach that you're truly exploring interesting possibilities, not just safe possibilities. And by switching back and forth between these two different views, especially as an entrepreneur, I feel it's one of the most practical ways to gain real life experience, to unlock interesting life opportunities, and to continue through this cycle so that you can unlock your time again and then repeat the cycle and explore additional new opportunities. But anyway, those are my thoughts on these two great books and how they compare with one another. If you have a different opinion or if you have any other questions or comments on anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section. And if you have two other books that you'd like to see me cover in the future in this format, let me know down in the comments and be sure to subscribe and visit rickkettner.com. That's where you can go to discover the very best books on business and entrepreneurship.